Continuing our discussion in quadrilaterals, moving beyond parallelograms, we're going to do a brief lesson here on trapezoids and kites. And with that, we're getting a couple of new theorems talking about the relations that exist within these shapes. So let's begin with isosceles trapezoids. Just like an isosceles triangle, an isosceles trapezoid is one where the two sides are of the same length. And for this, there are the sides that are not parallel. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one set of parallel sides, and then by default, one set that is not. So if we look at isosceles trapezoids, theorem 619 tells us if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. Now when we say each pair of base angles, that's because the two parallel sides are each called a base. So the angles involved there are the congruent to one another. Theorem 620 tells us if a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then its diagonals are congruent. So in this feature, it shares something in common with rectangles that we have that congruence of the diagonals. Given the figure here below, quadrilateral or trapezoid, uh, PQRS, we have our set of parallel sides and another set that are congruent to one another but not parallel. This is an isosceles trapezoid. What we need to do is find all the interior angles of this shape. Now, employing theorem 619, each pair of base angles is congruent, then that tells us that angle R and angle S, which share the same base, will be congruent to one another. So, the measure of angle S equals 106 degrees. <clears throat> now we can do a couple of things in order to find the measure of angle P and the measure of angle Q. Uh, we, can't, we know that the interior sum has to be 360 degrees, and since these are both base angles, they would have to be congruent to one another. Or, since we have a set of parallel lines, the isosceles sides, if you will, act as transversals. Same side interior angles have to be supplementary. And that's the method I'm going to use. So we can say that the measure of angle Q plus the measure of angle R is 180 degrees. Using substitution, the measure of angle Q equals 1, or Sorry, plus 106 degrees equals 180 degrees. Subtraction property of equality, I'm going to subtract 106 degrees from each side, leaving me with the measure of angle Q being 74 degrees. Then, again, employing theorem 619, we would have that the measure of angle P is also equal to 74 degrees. Now, not all trapezoids are isosceles, but when we do have them, we receive this special relationship that we're talked about here. But let's take a look at something that is true about all trapezoids, and that is a mid-segment. Recall we had a mid-segment theorem when we were working with triangles, and the mid-segment theorem for trapezoids is roughly the same. Theorem 621 tells us if a quadrilateral is a trapezoid, then the mid-segment is parallel to the bases, and the length of the mid-segment is half the sum of the length of the bases. Now the first one, mid-segment is parallel to the bases, this is the same as with a triangle. If we were to complete this to make it a triangle, the mid-segment, which is the, connecting the midpoints of the two sides, was parallel to the one base. Here we have two bases, so it's parallel to each of them. Uh, for part two, this is part of how we derive the formula for area of a trapezoid, which we will be studying later. So the sum of the two bases divided by two is the length of that mid-segment. Using that information from theorem 621, let's find the value of x in this figure, and let's find the length of each of these three bases, uh, the two bases and the mid-segment. So, we know that 
mn equals qr plus ps divided by 2. And that's what Theorem 621 Part 2 tells us. So, using a little bit of substitution here, I can say that 2x plus 11 equals 10 plus 8x minus 12, all divided by 2. In order to solve, I'm going to use multiplication property of equality and multiply both sides by 2. I have 4x plus 22 equals, I'm going to combine like terms on the right hand side, 8x minus 2. Now, going through to solve, subtraction property of equality, I get 22 equals 4x minus 2. Addition property of equality, 24 equals 4x. And then using division property of equality, x is equal to 6. Now, substituting back in in order to find my values for mn and ps, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 11 is 23. Next, 6 times 8 is 48. 48 minus 12 is 36. So we were able to find the length of each piece, and sure enough, 10 plus 36 is 46, divided by 2 is 23. Now, aside from trapezoids, we also get the special shape of kites. So let's take a, talk a little bit about them. A kite, by definition, is a quadrilateral that has two sets of consecutive congruent sides and no sets of parallel sides, much like a kite that you would use to fly in a windy day. Theorem 622 talks to us about kites, specifically about the diagonals. So it states, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. So using perpendicular properties, we'll be able to employ a lot of the things that we have for our trig relationships and other items when it comes to dealing with kites. So the long axis, or the long diagonal, also has the feature that it does bisect the short diagonal, but that is not reversible. And we can't always tell the proportionality <coughs> of dividing the longer diagonal by the short one. So in the figure here, in kite LK, or KLMN, let's find the missing angles. So since we know that we have 36 degrees here at angle NKM, angle 1 is at one of those intersections. So we know right away that the measure of angle 1 is 90 degrees. The diagonal KM bisects LKN. So angle 3 is equivalent to the other side. The measure of angle 3 is 36 degrees. That just leaves us with finding L. Well, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 has to be 180 degrees since they're all parts of the same triangle. Angle 1 is not actually in this triangle, but it is equivalent since this is a perpendicular intersection. So using substitution, we have 90 degrees plus the measure of angle 2 plus 36 degrees equals 180 degrees. Using our subtraction property of equalities so to subtract 90 degrees and 36 degrees, the measure of angle 2 is going to be 54 degrees. So trapezoids and kites are another set of quadrilaterals that are going to be important. Make sure you have these theorems down and are ready to use them.